Welcome to the Hospital Finance Podcast, your go-to source for information and insights that can help you stay ahead of the challenges impacting healthcare finance. And now, the host of the Hospital Finance Podcast, Michael Passanate. Hi, this is Mike Passanate, and welcome back to the award-winning Hospital Finance Podcast. Understanding how well your hospital's revenue cycle is doing begins with being able to measure its performance. To explain a few of the key revenue cycle management metrics you can monitor, I'm joined by Olga Barone Allen, Senior Manager of Onboarding and Reporting here at Bessler. Olga, welcome back to the show. Hi, Mike. Thank you for inviting me again. Glad to have you back, Olga. Um, Olga, why is it important to establish a set of key metrics to guide your revenue cycle process? Well, it's extremely important in the fact that, you know, uh, directors, CFOs need to understand, you know, what their current um, revenue cycle, how it's performing so that they can compare it to what's the in- industry expectation and also to understand what their true cost to collect is for uh, their claims. You know, this really impacts um, their their budgets, their forecasting and to understand really how long their claims, uh, you know, how much work their their employees have to focus on claims in order to get them resolved as quickly as possible. Understood. And there are many, many metrics that revenue cycle teams use to measure their performance. We've got a whole series on of them uh, up on the blog associated with this podcast, so we'll talk about that more in just a minute. But Olga, let's focus on just a few that, um, in your experience, you found to be critical. Uh, first would be final build uh, claim not submitted. Why don't you tell us about that? So the final build claims not submitted backlog. You know, if there is a backlog that's greater than or, or uh, than a day, you know that's a, it can create a timely filing issue, and it can create additional resources to resolve those claims. You know, when a bill drops from the mainframe, it really should not um, take more than a day to really resolve to have it go through a billing scrubber and then out the door. If there is a delay, that is adding to the, you know, aging of the of the claim and re- Depending on the payer, it could impact the the claim to be denied right off the bat as a timely filing. There are some, you know, payers out there that only allow 90 days from discharge date. So if it's being held up, whether it's in a, you know, final bill status or waiting for additional information, you know, you're counting against the clock at that point. So it's extremely important to make sure that uh, someone is monitoring the reasons, the causes that these claims are being held up from being billed immediately um, out the door and go back to the departments and possibly create crosswalks or algorithms that maybe the mainframe cannot um, cannot handle and build them with your billing scrubber uh, vendor and um, create those crosswalks and algorithms so that the claims are as soon as they're inputted into Billing Scrubber, they are out the door, you know, that day or at least the next day. And the next metric that you look at is DNFB. Why don't you tell us what that stands for and why that's worth taking a look at? DNFB stands for Discharge Not Final Bill. So a claim Um, You know, normally a hospital will hold an outpatient claim or an inpatient claim for a specific number of days. You know, for example, an inpatient claim four days, um, you know, to allow all the departments to, uh, you you know, post all their charges to make sure that the claim that's going out is a complete claim and that there aren't any charges. So, you know, a hospital uh, does allow a certain, you know, seven to 10, ten days is the norm but from my experience uh, that they will hold an inpatient claim before it drops uh, from the DNFB. However, there are some times that a DNFB, uh, a claim is held in, in a DNFB status uh, for longer than 10 days. Uh, in my experience, we, you know, 
at a few of the locations that I've worked at, uh, we would get an age trial balance from the DNFB uh, and make sure that we would meet with the departments to find out what cause or what is causing the claim from not dropping. And sometimes it's a glitch in the system in the mainframe. Sometimes it's a coding, um, you know, a modifier or um, you know, a condition code uh, that hasn't been placed on the claim. And for some reason, the mainframe is uh, indicating that you know, it's built to say if not all these fields are completed, you know, the bill is not going to drop. This causes the claims to age because, you know, the insurance company is not going to care why the claim was held up in DNFB. The, the insurance company is going to look at the discharge uh, date and count the days from there to determine whether the claim is timely or not. There have been cases um, that I've seen where, you know, there are claims that are in DNFB over a year old, uh, and the majority of the uh, payers um, would deny them even if you force them to drop at that point. So it's really important to make sure that these, you know, this, this age trial balance of the discharge not final bill is monitored on a regular basis by patient accounting, HIM, and the various clinical areas. Next up is percentage of clean claims. So the percentage of clean claims relates to your billing scrubber. So, you know, the goal is always, you know, with the electronic era, uh, back in the days, you know, hard, uh, hard copy claims, you know, you, you literally manually put them in envelopes and uh, mail them out. But with the electronic era and getting um, most of the payers uh, accepting electronic claims, uh, the goal is to make sure that all the claims are going out the door uh, electronically through your billing scrubber. So as new insurance companies are accepting insurance uh, electronic claims, um, you need to add that to the roster of your billing scrubber. So the goal is to get as many as possible that you're uh, that are going electronically and that are not going hard copy. Now there are, you know, you have your workers' comp, no fault payers. You know, those are hard to do. Uh, those, you know, unfortunately are still going out in most cases hard copy, and plus they're required, um, you know, medical records attached. So you know, those are a little more difficult to get them to be processed electronically. But all your, uh, you know, 97% of your payers should be accepting um, electronic claims. Therefore, you should always maintain the library or, you know, the roster of your billing scrubber up to date with uh, new insurance companies that are accepting them. So that way you're getting your clean claim, um, your percentage of clean claim rates, um, you know, to increase and make sure that your algorithms for those payers, because each payer has their own uh, nuance of uh, coding requirements, make sure that, that those are being uh, reviewed and um, brought up to, you know, to up, brought up to date to accept any algorithm that you put in um, that's, that is applicable to that insurance plan. So the goal is to make sure that the claims are going out, they're going out clean, they get paid within seven to, you know, seven to 10 days, hopefully, um, but, you know, at least within 30 days of uh, the submission. Olga, well, tell us about the underpayment overturn ratio. So this one's always interesting to me. Um, you know, nowadays, most mainframes have a contract management uh, profile uh, built into their mainframe. Therefore, your claim should be dropping right off the bat from uh, day one from DNFB to bill at a um, at the net reimbursement rate. Um, and if that is not the case, you know, you you really should be looking into making sure your mainframe is identifying the claims by the payer code, by the insurance plan code uh, primary. And uh, you're always 
you know, when you when you contract new rates, that contract management program needs to be updated uh, immediately based on the effective date. And, you know, there are some situations like ambulatory services that are more difficult in in um, coding the mainframe, but you really, really should get as close as possible to the net reimbursement rate. And um, I've found that uh, in the past, even though that uh, that program is incorporated in man- mainframe a billing system, uh, it's not maintained. And what this causes is it's overinflating what you're expecting as reimbursement. It's um, creating double work on the back end because uh, when the payment does come in, your billers or cash posters then have to go back in and do a manual adjustment to bring the uh, claim to the appropriate balance due. Um, it is a lot of work and it's high maintenance to to uh, maintain, but your contract management department should really be on top of this and, um, you know, be negotiating. Go and, and also this allows them to monitor and go back to your payers to make sure that they're paying appropriately. So it benefits all areas if it's maintained appropriate. And Olga, in addition to the metrics we just discussed, there is the idea of the aged trial balance. Can you explore that concept with us and and explain what that is? The aged trial balance uh, from the billing perspective, uh, not relating to DNFB, is uh, all the claims that are on your receivables that by payer, by age, um, and it allows a manager, director, CFO to really um, identify what is out there in their in in uh, in the receivable world. And you know, the the longer an, a claim ages, the harder it is to collect. And not appropriately um, flagging the the accounts to reflect of the the responsible party also can impact calculations of projections and budgets. Uh, for example, a Medicare claim, uh, you know, Medicare patient has Medicare and a secondary payer. You know, nowadays Medicare will pay, and then the, it should immediately cross over to balance bill to the secondary. So a Medicare patient that has a primary and secondary, you know, normally should not have a balance over, you know, due um, unless it's a non-covered item uh, charge. Um, So, you know, those claims immediately go to zero. The claims that go to zero uh, will not reflect, obviously, on your age trial balance because the there's no more um, balance to do. In a case where Medicare is primary and the patient doesn't have secondary, if Medicare paid, that that claim should be updated to reflect the self-pay balance. And that's how it should be reflected on your age trial balance. So the age trial balance is a great tool to not only um, advise uh, a manager, director, CFO to determine how long it takes to collect certain uh, claims, uh, it also allows them to determine which claims are at a certain point over the timely filing limit where, you know, it's going to result in a write-off where, uh, you know, it's too late at that point. It also allows them to understand, you know, how much money is sitting in the self-pay balance and then turning that around to bad debt agencies. Um, and and outsourcing them for a collection um, process. So uh, age trial balances is probably the most important tool out there to manage a business office. And um, it also allows the the manager or director of a patient accounting department to determine, you know, how many people are, you know, are needed to really follow up on these claims. It's really a great follow-up tool and it also allows to understand how long it takes to, uh, on average, to collect the claim. 
And in addition to the metrics we've discussed here today, there are several more posted to uh, the blog post associated with this podcast. So you can head up to Bessler.com, click on the Insights button, visit Revenue Cycle, and you'll see a blog post for key revenue cycle management metrics that you can take a look at. Olga, thanks so much for joining us again today on the show. Mike, thank you, and uh, be safe. You as well. This concludes today's episode of the Hospital Finance Podcast. For show notes and additional resources to help you protect and enhance revenue at your hospital, visit Bessler.com forward slash podcasts. The Hospital Finance Podcast is a production of Bessler. Smart about revenue, tenacious about results.